Um, I don't know why this is. Um, hmm. Because... Because I'm trying to, like... Because isn't dot .gz, isn't that, like, the right thing? Like... Actually, claim that it's that is already on zip. Hang on, what the? That's weird. Uh, how do I know if this zipped right? Oh, it says that there's one viewer. Hey, one viewer, if you're here, what's up? I'll just try doing it again. That's what I think I'll do. Unexpected end of file. Uh, you know what? Why is this auto completing? Oh. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'll re download it just to make sure it worked out okay. Um, what is this check? Um, so let me copy it. Did you guys know this? I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't. Um, w get or uh -huh, look at that. Pretty sick, huh? All right. Um, Oh shit, I installed it to the wrong place probably. L O L. I mean, oh, not fun. I'm... Oh, this should be easy. Okay. Ah, there we go. So I guess it just, like, wasn't just being weird. Um, I guess it might have been a problem downloading it. Oh, yeah, let's go, Wizzy. I'm talking about. Okay, um, you know what? That is fascinating. You know, it's really cool. Is that Okay, well, I'll explain that to you guys once there's actual human beings in here. It's just you and just me and Streamlabs right now. Okay.
Oh, it says that there's one person here now. Cool. Hey there, one of your... Okay, um... Now I'm here. Alright, well, let's read what this is again about. Uh, so it's a unit testing framework for C if you just simply for defining unit tests, putting a little annoyed the developer. Nice. Okay, cool. Cool. Oh. Ah. So what sorts of options do we have here? Actually, oh, I installed less. Oh, lit. Um, so now I can do... Oh, no, I didn't get less yet. Did I get more? I thought I got... Just kidding. Now we wait. Oh, it says we got a viewer. Hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, this is like, so Friday was my first day ever streaming. So this is my second day ever streaming. So um, I don't really know a lot about this, but I recently learned I can see who's watching. So I can... So if there's any viewers in the chat, let me know. Uh, it says that somebody just joined Pol Polcom21. What's up?
yeah, since a lot of this, uh, since a lot of my time is like waiting for things to compile, I can like, I can chat a lot of the time. When there like aren't any people actually watching, I'm watch, uh, you know, I'm just watching other streams too. So watching streams while streaming. But if there actually is somebody that just joined, that'd be pretty cool. All right, here we go. Uh, that's what I like to see. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Oh, that is a bug. Oh. Yeah, I gotta fix that. for generating students and students functions. And now we wait. Oh, hey, Commander Root. How's it going? Ignore the stream real quick because it's game five, Wizzy versus Fiction. Oh! Oh, that's too far!
what the spaghetti all over the place right now. Don't go in, don't chill. That's it. Hey, nothing, just doing some work. Emerges two files in front of them. Cool.
first and choose some unneeded files and not okay. How much competition do I got right now? Yeah, what the? F Can somebody explain to me what Ludum Dare is? So far, not even a scroll to get to me. Damn, so many people. Sorry about that. Um, Yes, all tests passed. That's what I like to hear. Yeah? No, thank you. No, thank you.
find useful methods. Tesla dot dot ex e e x t dot slash slash So is there anybody in here watching this channel, or is it just uh, is it dead in here? What's the what's the story? Yeah, I'm kind of confused because This is very strange. Anybody in the chat know how to help? All right, I know what to do. All right, I gotta cheat real quick. Hang on a sec.
a 4.6.0. Oh. So I don't have to make any of these fucking set changes. Alright, we take those. So you're saying that's all I gotta do? Where the fuck is Plop? Three? Oh. He lost to the Buzz and Esam. Not bad. Oh, that is so sick. Um. So, 
一年をすればいいのね。So replace find I don't really like that. That seems unnecessary. Tests there. But whatever. Hey, what's up,、uh, S1 Faka? If you're a real human being, we've been getting some bots in here lately. So it's kind of questionable whenever somebody comes into the. starts watching whether or not they're a real person. All right, time for some drop. So, what Groth is, is that this is it's a package that contains programs for like、uh, text formatting and processing. Oh, wait, fuck. Roth expects the environment variable page to contain the default paper size. What? Okay, that's weird. Paragraph for compilation. <sighs> so page is equal to paper size. Let's see, X11 support now. Eh. Doc build, okay. Alright, let's do it. Now, this doesn't support parallel building. I don't understand how long it'll take to do it to do the single threaded.
All right, bathroom break, BRB. Oh snap! Great kill. Yeah, this is taking a while. How long does that take? Two, almost three minutes. Okay, so what do we got here? So we got add ST info add. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah! The grub package contains a grand unified. Okay, I'm probably skipping that since I'm doing this on a Raspberry Pi, which has noobs, and noobs is cool. Yeah, we're not we're not doing grub. But we are doing less. Alright. That's the game. See, this is actually really nice to have less. Because I've been using like cat and shit before, and that's like not not fun. I mean, obviously, the big thing will when I can get like um, Vim or even Vi, that would be nice.
Did I install this? Yeah, I did. So if I look at this read me, nice. This is very cool. Okay, gzip package contains programs for compressing and decompressing files. Prepare gzip for compressing. Is it weird? So the Z option means that it is GZIP. And what's the J option for? XZ. Oh, yeah. So is it weird that GZIP is compressed using XZIP? Just saying. And I mean, I guess it makes sense, obviously, because like if you if you don't have it, you know. Um, what are the options here? Now that I have less, I can like read things, and I'm like encouraged to, and that's nice. Like I would try to read things before, but it's like hard. Okay, that's cool. Did I? So, gunzip is decompresses gzip files. Gzip.exe creates self decompressing executable files. That's cool. Gzip files using kind decompresses compressed files. Decompresses the given.
What fucking fail? Okay, that's fine. All right, some more networking stuff. The IPR2 package contains programs for basic and advanced IPv4 basic networking. So the ARPD program, including this project, will not be built since it's not on Berkeley DB, which is not installed in the However, director for ARPD and a man page will still be installed. Prevent this by running the commands below. The ARPD binary is needed in search for compliant can be found in the BLFS book. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's um, all right. We gotta we gotta ease back into this. How can we find? Uh, sorry. No, it's okay. Tell, talk to me, Blair. What's what's been happening? Um, you know, it's it's one one. I'm looking one game one at Sea World Stadium. And he's dead. Oh, okay. I thought that shit was dead. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. All right. All right. So, um. What's up, guys? Anybody that's in the chat? So what I'm, um, by the way, is anybody here actually like a real person? I just started doing this a few days ago, and sometimes it says people like join the channel, and then it's like they're not real people. But anyways, what's up, Marka the Ninja? That's a cool name. I think I played a game with that name once. And then S1 Faka. How are you guys doing? If you're a human being, see, because it says that there's other people in the chat, and I've actually confirmed. That they're bots that will like try to sell shit or whatever in the chat. Which is not cool. So actually S1 Faka, I have confirmed, is not a human being, I think. Um and then Mark and the Ninja left. I guess I'm all alone.
dot ipr two five dot two dot l So what do we got? Bridge, CSS, okay. Shows the interface statistics. I like this. Alright, what is KBD? KBD package, oh. Contains key table files, console files. What the fuck? All right. Well, if you, if you say so. After watching the backspace key generates the character. Prepare KBD for compilation. So slash lib slash pkg config. This presents a view of utility.
Changes the foreground virtual terminal. What does that even mean? Oh. What? How does it? Oh, the machine itself. So it's not... I could be anywhere, so I could go. Oh, it's changing of the host system too, which is kind of weird. Cool. What the fuck does um <sighs> Do you allocate unused virtual turret? Do you allocate I don't really know what the fuck that does. That's true. No way, how many fucking virtual terminals are there? Yeah. 
ですとか。Fascinating. Print the kernel scan code to key code mapping. Can we get key codes? This of the keyboard and the virtual console. I'm going to hop over real quick. Uh, you won't be able to see this, but I am going to jump on another thing and open like a graphical thing and see what that reports. Although I'll still be in a terminal, so I don't know really what that'll do. Maybe because it's a virtual console. No, what if I just straight up like exit to command line? Buttons do anything? Yeah, I guess it. I guess it will. Why is that different? Hello. This is very cool stuff. Okay. So who here's in the? Who here's watching this right now? Who is in the chat? When have other people ran into this issue? Fascinating. This is very cool. Wait a second. But I'm in Tmux. So what's the difference? So if I do, hello? 
well. Hopefully this doesn't fucking break. Um, oh, that looks sick. Um, I'm using the wrong phone. Oh, God damn it. So you have to be rude. Fuck. Okay. Is text, right? It's graphics, what the fuck? This is, yeah, I should probably be showing you guys this. What's up, RPG Damon? Are you a human being or? Because I've been getting so many freaking bots that are like joining the channel and stuff, so it's hard to tell who's real and who's not. Um. Anyways, so how's it going? Mr. RPG. So that is TTY4. Yeah, I know. No, I think some of them are like actually bots though. Because when I, um, like, if you click on their names and, like, go to their channel, they're, like, these channels that are just full of, like, bots talking to each other. It's really weird. But finally, I have a real human being watching the channel. What's up, dude? Thanks so much. Um, so I should probably be now showing what I'm doing. 
Um, so what I'm doing right now is I got to switch back to the right. Well, I don't know. I'm. This is my second time ever streaming, so I, I'm kind of don't really know what to expect. Um, so anyways, what I'm doing now is I'm messing around with um, the TTYs in the... Um, like on my virtual console here. So um, I had just finished making and compiling this, um, but they will say till you stop, not come and go. True. Yeah. Except I got, I got one bot on Friday that let, like most of them just lurk, but then I got this one bot that was like posting in the chat trying to like, I forgot what they were saying. Trying to get me to, like, go to their website or something. It was pretty bad. So, like, do you have any uh, programming experience or anything like that? Like, have you ever used Linux before, maybe? That is so interesting. Um, all right. Anyways, so let's see. We got KBD info, KBD mode. What is KBD rate? Uh, okay. Actually, the keyboard is some unknown mode. See, so this is saying graphics. What if I make a new one and then... Then before it said text. Oh my, I can't do anything. Okay. Um, load keys. Loads the kernel. Okay. Um, map an obsolete program. Unable to find command. How does this sort? This utility helps you start a program on a new virtual terminal. So C is the use the given virtual terminal number. See, so yeah, you never dove deep into Linux since 2008. So, um, well, it's cool just having you, and and it's nice because then, you know, well, if there's anything that you like want to know, then for sure let me know. Like. Right now, I've gotten sort of sidetracked. So I'm building this this OS right now, and I'm setting up like the. So what a virtual terminal is is that it is a. Um. It's sort of like so. So when you load Linux, right? You think you open Linux like Ubuntu or something like that, and you have like the graphical things. You know, like you got your dock there on the side and your menu bar and like your desktop and all that. But actually when you load, how can I show this? Um, so anyways, when you load Linux, um, what actually happens at first, it boots into like a text environment, right? And what happens is that after the text environment finishes loading, when you, um, when you boot Ubuntu, the first command that's run in this text environment is a command that starts the graphical environment, right? And that, and that text. What is Slackware? I'm gonna let me Google that real quick. Slackware is that? I'm guessing that's sort of sort of Linux distribution. Um. Oh, it's like some kind of super like sleek and minimal Linux build. 
I think. Okay. Cool, cool. Oh, you do know what LFS is. Okay. Oh, so it's like, it's like Arch or something. Like very, nobody knows it by now, I'm guessing. Okay. But anyways, so that, that, that text terminal that actually all of the stuff that's run on before it launches your graphical environment, that's called your desktop environment, right? That's called like a TTY. And I can't really show it to you since the terminal that you see here is like actually like an SSH. And, and there's, it's, what you're seeing there, like here on the screen right now, is SSH into the, I'm making this on a Raspberry Pi, so I don't really know how to show you what I'm actually, because if I were to, to load up the TTY, there's no way to like mirror that or anything. I mean, I'm actually looking at it like, like the Pi itself is, if I can move this without ruining everything. I mean, I'm actually working like over here and then I'm just SSH into it on this computer and then that's what you're seeing. So I'm, me myself, I'm going a little bit like off topic because I've already built the TTYs, but well, I've built most of the TTYs, so I could just move on now, but I'm actually very interested in how it's working. So that's sort of what I'm playing with right now. Um, so if I do TBD info, so GKBD mode, so what's that? Um, TBD info, GK, GKB, that doesn't say anything, okay. TBD info, GKB meta. I don't know what any of this means. Okay. Um, Oh, cool. And now if I turn on cap sock, will it say that it's on? No, it still says cap socks off even though it's on. And I'm guessing it's GKB like LED, like the actual LED on the the thing. And the LED on the keyboard is turning on. Can I set that? That would be cool. Um Is there a way to set it using this tool? It doesn't look like it. What about the other what do I I got the scroll lock? And then what other things are there? There's the num lock. Okay, well this doesn't have a numpad. The toggling scroll lock also doesn't do anything. So I don't really know what that's for. Um, see what I'm interested in is the open VT command. So the way this works is that I can say open VT Console is equal to, uh, let's see. And then if I say slash bin slash bash, a legal virtual terminal number, do I just maybe put the number in here? Like, No, it's not. It says it's in use. So now I'm going to jump to something that you can't see. But I will uh, attempt to confirm what they're saying. Why can't I switch my virtual terminals right now? No, oh, man, none of my keys are doing anything. Hello? Oh shit, I think I froze the... I think I like just... I think the... My... My... high just froze. So I don't know what command that was with. Oh wait, no, I can... Okay, now I can type things, but they're not...
That's very strange. Um, oh. Oh, I can type things on here. So it... Oh. This is very weird. What's going on right now? Um... It seems like things are breaking that shouldn't be. So let me try to debug this real quick because now my display on the Raspberry Pi is not working. Yeah, this isn't a very exciting part of the debugging process, unfortunately. So let's see if I can... Um, So what if I force it on? That is that is fascinating. Okay. <sighs> Anyways. So now for some reason whenever I try to use any of the any of the virtual terminal like that the TTYs it it freezes which is I should be concerned but I actually think that's really cool. I don't know why that happens. All right, um I'll probably move on now. Set font set key code, set LEDs. Oh, wait, here we go. Set LEDs. Error reading current flag settings. Maybe you're not on the console. Um, are you not on the console? I am on the console, I think. Um... Okay, whatever. Um, I'll do this later. Okay, so now, sorry for not being the best streamer in the world, but now we're gonna actually install libpipeline, which is a package that contains libraries for manipulating poplines, pipelines of subprocesses in a flexible and convenient way. Um, so I'll just do that by first, um, removing the virtual terminal stuff, which is KBD. And then tar, or actually, what does the lib pipeline thing look like? GZ, okay. ZXVF. All right. Oh. So again, what, what Lib Pipeline is for is that it lets you make like pipelines between subprocesses in a very 
in a very like easy way. So after installing lib pipeline, we'll be able to do a lot more with the system because not only like user stuff, like manually making pipes, like that will work better more easily, but also in the following things we're going to be making and compiling, those things will need more advanced pipelines than what we've previously been able to do before. So after, after we do this, um, things should be much like, we'll be able to do, we'll be able to compile different sorts of things now. All right, now I just gotta check to see if it works. All right, moment of truth. Lit, okay, great. Okay, so now we'll be able to make a lot cooler stuff. And now the first thing that we're going to make with our new pipelines is actually is actually make. So let's go ahead and make make. Um, what's the extension? GZ. So tar cxvf. So now, now we'll, and now obviously make is something very important for a system. So once we install make, well, configure, compile, and install make, it will be a lot, um, um, we'll, we'll be able to then from here on out get more advanced programs and libraries that we haven't been able to get before. Um, I think we might have to do some like micromanagement first though, um, possibly. Yeah. So there, however, glibc227 caused an error. So we got to make a quick workaround here. So, to, so on lines 211 and 217 of the glob file, um, I guess there's some problems, so we're just gonna delete these lines. Okay, 219, 229, and then 230, 250. All right, from 219, we're just deleting a bunch of files. Blob slash. So now we're gonna configure this. Um, Okay. By the way, I make this announcement every couple minutes, but I have no idea what happened. Like, I have no idea about anything when it comes to streaming. But if there's anybody, like, that joins the chat, like, I will, like, not know that you're there. So, like, please say hi. So, I mean, I can, like, look. But, like, that way I can, like, if you guys have questions or anything like that, like, there's somebody new, Ratchet. Like, I don't know if that person's real or not. Who knows? Okay, anyways. Yeah, I know RPG was telling me earlier that I should just let the lurkers lurk, but I'm trying to get some engagement over here. What's the sloth? Serious sloth? Is that uh is that like from somebody's Oh no I got that too. Cool. Okay. Let's compile it. That was fast, now we just gotta make sure everything worked. And so the test suite that we're gonna be running needs to know where the Perl tests are going to be. 
And it's actually right here. All right, so far so good. And again, if the tests fail, then we then we get very sad. That's the plan, boys. I hope parallelism works. <sighs> so now it's just you and me, RPG. So what are you doing right now? I hope I hope you're not giving me all of your attention, because that that would be a I don't think I'm that exciting right now. So are you are you doing some work or I don't know. Playing a video game. Trying to sleep. If you're trying to sleep, I probably shouldn't be talking to you. Um so yeah, no fails, right? No failures. Well, I'm glad you picked me again. Um, like I was a lot more involved with the chat the other day. You know, I had people asking me questions about like, you know, about programming in general and about Linux and about Linux from scratch and how designing an operating system and also about like astronomy. Actually, my, um, you know, my, my actual, like what I do for a living is I'm an astrophysicist. So, well, at least I study astrophysics. So, if you have questions about if you want to know how stars are made or black holes or whatever uh, we can talk about that too or just what i'm doing i definitely like you know or if you're having some like problem on like what are you running um windows now you said that i don't know if i scroll back in the chat you use slackware from 2002 since 2008 so does that mean that, then you said you use Slackware until 2008. Does that mean that you're like, does that mean that you're not using Linux at all now or that you're just not using Slackware and that you've upgraded to some better distro like Ubuntu or Manjaro? Yeah, somebody was in the chat the other day and they wanted to know, like, they wanted to, um, they were actually a sysadmin, but a Windows sysadmin. And they wanted to know a good, like, Linux distro to get started with. And, um, and I was like, oh, well, you know, TBH, like Ubuntu is, you know, a good place to start. And then this other guy in the chat was getting like angry. He was saying like, oh my gosh, like get Manjaro. It's the best Linux distribution ever in every single way. And he was, he was going off on me for even thinking about Ubuntu. So. But not anymore. It's just a hobby. So you're using Windows now or... Or what, you got a Mac or something? Not anymore, it's just a hobby. Yeah, that's cool. But anyway, so yeah, so what I just installed was Make. And what Make does is that it automatically determines which pieces of a package need to be recompiled or just compiled. And then the issues, and then issues the relevant commands to do that. All right, well now, next we're gonna be installing patch. Um, and what patch is, is that that's a package containing a program for modifying or creating files by applying a patch to like another file. Right. So let's see what kind of options we have here. Um,
Yeah. I don't think I need to be bothered with this stuff. Just the prefix, I think, is the only thing I'm going to need to change here. So it's the ultimate goal. Um, that's a good question. So I would say that it's something like that. Um, it's to make my own distro for a couple reasons. Um, obviously, the main reason is because, you know, all those people that are like, oh, I use Arch BT dubs, and they're trying to, like, you know, always make themselves sound more superior. So definitely the main reason to do um, to make your own operating system from scratch is so that whenever you encounter those people, then you can, you know, one up them. And then that's, yeah, that's actually the only reason that I'm doing this. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, the, the, why I'm doing this is because I've always, I love Linux and Unix a lot and I've used it for a couple of years now. And I just, I, I have so much fun like learning about it and I'll be doing things one way for like years. And then I'll just be online or, or explore, like playing around with it and I'll figure out like a much better way to do things. And when I discover that, that's a great feeling. So I'm always trying to learn more about it. And I figured that, and what I want from this is a way to learn a lot about Linux and how it works, you know, because there's, and how to, you know, from a very, very low level, from the kernel, right, building, you know, writing, configuring, com, you know, compiling, installing, then all the configuration with the kernel, up through, so through the kernel space, up through user space, like you can see here, bash, like, by the way, if you haven't noticed right now, what you're actually seeing here is the, is my operating system like my own operating system environment right here. So this, everything that you're seeing in this terminal, like all these commands, so like bash that's running here or LS or all of these things, I, there is not a single file on this entire file system, not a single program or anything, right? That's pre-compiled. I compiled and configured and installed and like, set up and went through all the of everything on here i've been doing this for like over 50 hours now easily trying to get here and i'm not i'm probably like 30 percent of the way through it's a you know this is a huge undertaking and there's a lot more to be done but i've learned a crazy amount like i'm definitely getting what i wanted to out of this so far because i'm learning so much about how all of this stuff operates and how to use things. And, and now I'm actually better at using like Linux, like distributions that I didn't make, you know, like if I'm on Raspbian or Ubuntu, it's like, I'm learning things about how it works and I can use that better now. But also it's cool because when I'm making this, when I'm making my, my distribution, I can pick what I want to be there. So a lot of the times it's like, you know, I, so I'm spending a lot of time thinking about, oh, what things do I want in my operating system? How do I want it to work and behave? Yeah, <laughs> trash those Gen 2 plebs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do something like this for a while. And I'm still in university and I'm taking an operating systems class this semester. So I figured, and we need to do like a project, like a, a project that's supposed to span the whole semester on something related to operating systems. So I thought that this would be a great excuse to be able to do this. Obviously, my professor is not expecting anybody to do something this like intense. Like I spent a long time on this so far. And from like seeing what other people have been trying to do for their projects, this is definitely like by far the most ambitious project in the class because nobody else is spending I mean, this much time on it. Um, because I, I also have a pretty light semester. I'm graduating this semester and these are just, I'm just finishing up some classes right now. So like some of my last classes. So this is like the lightest semester I've had. So I figured, why don't I take a huge project, you know, to maybe compensate a bit for how much, um, for how little like standard workload I have. So I've been spending all my free time on this. Did I already install this? I forget, no, I just did configure. Oh, what? Didn't I just run 
the Oh no, no no I just ran the help for the computer. I never actually configured it. Okay. So, like, what do you do? Like, are you, um, do you work with technology at all? Like, as part of your education or job or anything like that? All right, now it's time to compile the patch. So like, what's your, what's your job? Pro gamer, pro RPG player. Are you a landlord? Well, dude, that's a nice gig. Because, I mean, you obviously own land, right? The landlord... Wait, do you, do you own the land... Or are you, oh shit, are you like paid by the person that owns the land to like, to like management, to manage it and all that stuff? Pro RPG player to the bone? That's what I'm talking about. What kind of RPGs do you like? Oh shit. I think I might have unplugged the, yeah, I unplugged the ethernet cable from the Pi. So now we are disconnected. Um, okay, so I need to do some networking uh, magic right now on the, um, I gotta do some networking magic right now on the, um, on the Pi, so you won't be able to see what I'm doing for a second. Um, okay, it says we're up. Okay, now I should be connected again. I think I fixed it. All right, so I showed you the IP address, so you better not hack me, all right? <laughs> Tmux attached to all plus six. And we're back. Good. All right, what was the last thing I ran? Okay, I checked it. And everything, so you notice here that, you know, you might think that I'm um, upset because of, because it says, you know, X fail here, like something failed. But actually what X fail means is that that's short for expected fail. Because some tests, right, they're supposed to fail. You know, because maybe there was a test for this that's like, maybe this is supposed to, Maybe one of the tests, what it does is that it checks to see what happens if you put in like an invalid parameters or something like that, or something that's not supposed to work, and then you want that to fail. So an X fail is a good thing, right? There's actually something called an X pass, which is not good. An X pass means it's something that you, 
expected to fail, but then it passed, and then that's not good. Because that means that there's something wrong with, like, the error checking. Yeah, dude, people are trying to hack me all the time. For real. Um, if I do, like, um... So, if you look at this... Uh, what you can see... Is, um... So, this is very cool. How do I highlight things? So, what you can do is that... So, this is me just now when I logged in. Like, um... So, this is me when I logged in a few minutes ago after I got disconnected there. But what you can see is that actually all the time I'm getting... Uh, people are trying to log in. See, look. People are trying to do these, like trying to sign in as like root and they're trying to like figure out all of like the different possible like password combinations and things like they pick like random user names they'll be like you know like jack is like a common name so they'll try logging in as jack and then it's like well there's no user called jack on there so yeah especially like yeah see look session closed for user SMS like nobody Yeah, uh, pretty much people are, and when I look at the IP addresses that these people are coming from, they're all from China, all of them. Like, people are talking about, like, Russian hacker. I don't see any of that. I, But I get every hour maybe 30 or 40 um, attempts to, like, brute force sign in from China. Uh, that's actually why a few days ago I installed this thing called fail to ban and what fail to ban does is, um, I forget actually how it works. Um, but like, I mean, I, I know how, I mean, I forget like the command, how to see it, but what it does is that if somebody, if somebody tries to connect and then they get like the password wrong or something a few times in a row, then it will add that then it will just block all connections from them so they can't do it anymore so you'll actually see recently it was maybe in the last hour instead of like 40 or so it was probably like five or ten that's because all of them are getting blocked if i actually look at the ip table okay i don't know how this works um i don't know how i actually look at the ip tables Oh, geez, that looks complicated. But anyways, if I were to look at the IP tables, you could see that there's a bunch of people that are just blocked. Like, there's thousands of people banned from there. Yeah, you always want to set up a honeypot and just observe. I've always been... I've wanted to do that, too. Like, set up, um, like, a virtual NAT or something so that, so that they can't get network access to any other devices. And then just set, like, a... You know, and then have, like, root with, like, password root, you know, just root root, and then they could probably get in there very easy. Like, what do they do? That's that's the question, right? You know, it's like, what are they going to do on, like, a Raspberry Pi? Like, are they going to try to, like, look for, like, personal information, or are they going to try to access, like, can't, like, what do they actually do with that? It's not like I'm running a web server or anything on there, or to, like, that they could steal data off of, but... Okay. Um, anyways, did I already install this? No, I only checked. Jeez, I'm so slow. Um, so yeah, so it patches that it modifies files according to a patch file. Oh, is that what they do? Is that, is that what like those the Chinese hackers are doing? They're trying to just add you to a botnet? And then I guess what my botnet would do is do the same thing that they did to me would probably just look on the internet and then try to like, you know, guess passwords to, to open SSH things. Modifies. Files according to a patch file. Okay. The man DB package. Okay. Well, I installed this, right? Okay. So now I'm going to install MandyB. Uh, 
What is Mandy? Okay, that's XC. Let's sort of, okay, so prefix, I'll need that, doctor, I'll need, okay, I'm going to use, uh, yeah, I'm going to need a lot of these, ooh, yeah, okay, threads, I like threads, um, okay, so we're going to use a bunch of these options here. So we're going to solve this here. Slash user slash center slash docs. Uh, did I type all this? Okay, sysconf disable, set UID, enable cache owner. Okay. So, oh yeah, to explain what those options are, so what disable set UID is, is that that disables the man program. That So, sometimes it'll... The, so I'm trying to install man, which if you remember from Linux, lets you like see what each thing does, right? So when you, so when you create man, what default it'll try to do is that it'll try to create a new user called man that will like be the owner of the program. I don't really care about that, so let's not do that. I'll just have it owned as root. And then the enable cache owner equals bin. What that does is that um, that makes the system wide cache files be owned by the user bin. And then all those with stuff is that like those three things is that those three parameters are used to set some default programs. So what links is, is that that's a text-based web browser. Uh, Vgrind, it converts program sources to graph input. And then grap is useful for typesetting graphs and graph documents. And then Vgrind and graph programs are not normally needed for looking at man pages. Um, but in case I want to install those later, I added support for them. And then with systemd, what those two do is that that prevents installing the unneeded systemd directories and files. All right, we're all configured. Let's see how long this is going to take. Let's see how many like system resources we're using.
Oh wait, let's okay. So we compiled it. Now let's just check it. All right. So what I did is I just installed a couple of um, a couple of programs in library. So I installed Access DB, which dumps the what is database contents in human readable form. Uh, apropos which is a command that searches the what is database and displays short descriptions of system commands. Uh, Catman, which creates or updates like pre-formatted man pages. And then Lexgrog is one line summaries about a given man page, kind of similar to Apropos, I think. Um, man is, as you may know, um, man lets you, um, man is the, oh, hey, let's see. Kushi, is it Kushi? Kushi? Uh, what's up, dude? How's it going? Uh, I'm just here. I'm trying to make my own operating system on a Raspberry Pi. Kushi. Okay. Um, so do you have any like uh, programming experience or anything? Have you ever used Linux before? If not, that's totally cool because then we can like I can show you how all the stuff works and you know like from the ground up. Manjaro. Yeah. Okay. Manjaro is pretty sick. That uses like the, uh, like the arch kernel, I think like it's based off of arch. I see a lot of people posting about it on like Reddit and stuff, but you're not experienced with it. Oh, well then you, that is, um, okay. So that, that's actually awesome because that's, that's perfect for this channel. Cause what I really want from this channel is obviously to make my, my operating system, but I also want to help, like, I also want to interact with the chat and show people that are watching it or, you know, live or watching the VODs. Just kidding. Nobody's going to watch these VODs. But um, that um, are, you know, that are in the channel, show them about Linux and how to use Linux and not just how it works, because that's that's what I'm getting from this. And that's what you'll just be getting from just watching it. But also, I want to go out of my way to show people how to use it and all of the different so that's a that's really cool that you know that you're somebody that already has Linux but is trying to learn more about it. So that's that's very cool. Um so if you have used Linux and you're trying to learn more about it, one of the most um one of the best tools to do that is the man command. I don't know if you've ever heard of the man command. But what the man command lets you do is that if you type man and then a and then like a program name like ls or something like that, it will tell you all about it. So for example, if I if you don't know what the man command is, right? So if there's a command you don't know, you just do man that command. So in this case, if you don't know what man is, we can do man man. Yes, it works. I haven't actually like tried it yet because I literally just installed it. But what man does is that as you can see here. What man is, is that it's an interface to the online reference manuals. So in other words, man is short for, you know, the man doesn't mean like the person command. The man is short for the manual command. So here's that one line description there at the top. And then there's the synopsis, which tells you like how to actually use the command. And then after that is the description, which tells you verbally about it. So here it tells you that the man is the system's manual pager. So each page argument given to man is normally the name. So for another example, like, um, like if you, have you ever used, um, so have you used the terminal at all yet? Like if you have, you might've used like LS, right? So if you do man LS, you can see here that LS, what that does is that it del lists directory contents, right? Because if you do LS and you're in a directory, right? That prints out everything in the directory. 
So list information about the file, sort entries alphabetically if not. So, and then, because you know, I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of different options for man. Like, you know, you can do, if you want it to be colorized, you can do LS color, and then that makes it colorized. Um, actually, I can do LS, and it's colored without me having to do that. That's because if I do alias, I actually alias LS to be color, but if I do LS L, right, what that does is that normally LS will just tell you everything that's in the directory, but if you do LS L, it'll tell you more information about it. So it'll tell you, um, you can't see my mouse. I actually don't know how to turn on mouse support, which kind of sucks. But here you can see like the permissions. This is the, um, so this will tell you when it was last modified, uh, like the size of it. Here you can see the size. Oh, I don't know how I could select like that. But anyways, you can see the sizes. So there's a lot of different ways you can use LS. And the, the man page will tell you all about that. So um, I don't know. Uh, oh, wait, let me scroll back. Cushy. So I don't know, Cushy, if you've ever used man before, but um, or if you've ever used the terminal, but this is a great tool to do that. So yeah, if you're in the chat, like, and if you're watching this, like, please, like, definitely say hi, because I am super new to streaming, so I don't like, you know, so if you guys, like, say hey, then, like, I can give you, like, attention and stuff, and we can, we can do things, and I can actually look to see if there's people lurking, and then I can yell at you, because there's a button here. Ooh, and I learned how to do this yesterday. This is my second time streaming, and I learned how to do this. I can, um... Let me do this, where I can change the scene. Look at this pro streamer moves right here. And I can see the people that are that are watching. And then pro streamer move, just like that. Look at that. Do you see those trans, the fade? Oh my gosh. Yo, when I learned that and I did that, I, 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 I was like, okay, I'm ninja now. That's like, felt like ninja when I do these transitions. You've never used man, but you've heard of it. Okay. Well, now you know what it is and how it works. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is installing the tar command. So what tar is, is like, if you, you, I'm sure you've heard of like dot zip files or like dot seven Z or these other things, right? Cause these are all like compression things. So what tar is, is that, did I change the thing back to my, wait, wait. I'm making sure you guys can see the terminal. Yeah. So what so what tar is is it's another compression and decompression tool. And this is what the main one that's used on Linux. So if I install this, it will let me um it will let me compress and decompress files. You may be kind of confused, like, wait, if I haven't installed tar yet, how am I using it right now? Uh the reason for that is the reason that I'm able to do this is because I have compiled tar before on an older version of, not on, on an older, on, on a, I compiled tar a few days ago with a less capable compiler and with fewer library support. But now that I've spent the last few days installing more libraries, and installing more like tools and better compilers. And now I can remake tar and make it better. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to say, um, force unsafe configure. And then I'm going to do dot slash configure. Yeah, so you've heard of man. I don't know if I already read that message. Um, so to tell you what some of these options is, so what the force unsafe configure does is that that forces the test for um, MK node, which is uh, something that I installed earlier to be run as root. And generally it's considered dangerous to run some of these tests as root, but it's being run on a system that's only been partially built, so overriding it's okay. Uh, 
Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I have to confess, I know nothing at all. Like, like sometimes when I'm feeling good about myself, I'm like, oh, wow, I know a lot about this. You know, I know what's going on. I can do all these cool stuff. And then I talk to somebody that actually knows Linux and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know nothing. There's a, there's a bunch of levels in there. And truth is, is that I don't know where I score in like the percentiles, but I'm definitely nowhere near like, like I, I don't, I hardly know anything uh, compared to like on the big scale, but I appreciate that a lot. Uh, I'm 21 right now. Uh, I'm at, uh, uh, it's my last semester of university. So in a couple of weeks I'll be graduating. Make, All right, so I configured it successfully. So now I can do, actually, if you do the time, so this is another cool command. If you do time before a command, it will tell you how long the command takes. So if I do time LS, it tells me how long it took LS to run. So as you can see here, it took 0 0.008 seconds which makes sense because LS is pretty fast. So if I want to see how long, and what the make command does is that that will compile. It'll do a couple of things, including compiling your programs. So if I do time, hey, can you come back in a few minutes? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, Thanks. So what the time command so if I do time and then make, it'll say how long it takes for this to compile. And then if I do the J flag for make, what make J does that that will compile it using multi-threading support. How long have I been using Linux? Um, that's a little bit complicated. So Linux itself, like I only started using Linux a lot, like maybe honestly, two years ago or something. But I've, you, I, I've had a lot of experience with very similar operating systems in kernels before. So something I've had a lot of experience with is like just Unix in general. Like my daily driver is, uh, is a Mac and I've had a Mac for a long time. And Mac OS is actually very, very similar to Linux under the hood. So, I mean, you may look at like Manjaro and then, you know, here, can I do another pro streamer thing right now? Uh, pro streamer, maybe, we'll see. Okay, uh-oh, wait. I don't think that worked. Oh, there it is, kind of, okay. Hang on, this is way too big right now. All right, let's, oh geez, let's get out of there, okay. So now, as I was saying, if you look at this and you're like, this doesn't look like Linux at all, you know, if you, you know, Ubuntu looks very different, different than Mac OS, so how can you say that? they're super similar. And in fact, on like the GUI, like, you know, the, the applications and all this stuff, they may not look very similar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Use Manjaro. So you, you're already, um, you know, you, you are, you, you are already an insider. So, but fine. If you look at Manjaro and compared to this, you'll see that it looks very different. And, but the thing is though, is that while on the surface, you know, like the applications and stuff are different under the hood, right? They are very similar. So this here is like I'm SSH into like a Linux machine, but here, if I open a new terminal, this is my terminal on my own like Mac. And they're, they're pretty much the same. Like the time command I was just showing you, I can do the same thing here, right? There it is. And all of, all of the commands are the same and even some of the under actually not some of the most of the underlying structure of the operating systems are the same and i've been using the terminal 
on the Mac, well, not just the terminal on the Mac, but the Mac itself and doing low level Macintosh stuff for many years now, like for a long, long time. So most of my knowledge about Linux actually has come from using the Mac and not just the Mac. Um, when I was in high school and in my first few years of college, I was very into like the jailbreaking community and developing jailbreaks and running those. And in, when you jailbreak the iPhone, right? Or like this iPad here that I'm, oh, you, you know what? The camera's not actually on right now. Let me put the camera on here. Um, I can do that by, see, I'm, I'm still super new to this, but I think there's like a video capture button or something. Uh, video capture device, camera, FaceTime camera. I'm going to make this smaller. Okay. I got to get this out of here to make it. Um, okay, anyways. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I was saying like, so this, or like this iPad here, right? Would they all have, um, wait, is the camera frozen? Hey, Chad, is the camera frozen right now? Because it looks like it's frozen on here. Hello? Yeah, the camera is definitely not working right now. Let me try doing that again. Here it is. Okay. I'm just going to make it, you know, smaller. Okay. Okay, now you can, pr okay, anyways, it's so like, it's so like when I've like jailbreaking, like these sorts of things, they're just learning exploits on them. In fact, um, if you have an iPhone or something like that, you know, you'll see like, oh, this is a very like, you know, graphical looking thing right here. You got these app, you know, but actually under the hood on this is actually the same terminal that you've been seeing this whole time on the Raspberry Pi and on mine. So, in order to learn how to operate iOS, like iPhone and iPad at a low level, is that you have to use the same tool. So, I learned tons about low-level Linux stuff and how to exploit those kinds of things. And by learning how to exploit things, you learn how they work. So, I've learned a lot about how they work from um, hacking iPhones and iPads. So when you ask how long I've been using Linux, um, Linux specifically um, has been, I'd say maybe like two years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May, uh, a bit over two years, but Unix in general, which is what, so Linux and Mac OS and iOS and iPad OS, those three are all based off something called Unix. And Unix, so, so the, so I've been using Unix for a very long time. Do you prefer Mac or Linux? Um, it depends on the context. Um, I think as a, I like Linux. You know what? No, I'll just say it. I, I like Linux better than Mac OS. Mac OS, I, uh, Linux, you have, like for me, like my, um, like when I'm actually studying in universities and I'm studying astrophysics and I'm studying astrophysics because I like learning how things work at a very fundamental level and learning and knowing how things operate and being able to predict what things do. And for that Linux is just, there's so much you can do with it and you can customize it. However, I mean, you can look at what I'm doing right now. I'm literally making, a whole Linux operating system from scratch because that's how much power you have in Linux that you can just remake the whole thing. 
So that's what. So I would say I'm more of of a Linux fan in general, like conceptually and all that stuff. In terms of oper- like I like Linux better, but like in terms of like an uh, a laptop, I think like um um lately i've been using linux on my laptop a bit like um manjaro specifically but um well actually i use manjaro for a bit i've actually been using um arch and raspbian um but arch and so the thing is though is that specifically on my macbook that i'm using right now that i'm streaming this on um it's like mac os is unsurprisingly better on macbooks than manjaro so day-to-day stuff when i'm on my laptop uh mac os is what is what i like the best for like for my laptop but then on my desktop and all that stuff it's linux all day so if maybe looking at new like when i'm thinking of getting my next laptop which won't be for a long time because i spent so much freaking money on this laptop but for my next laptop, I'll probably be looking at something like Linux. Like, um, all right, now pro streamer move. Oh no, wrong pro streamer move. There we go. All right. Um, actually, speaking of iPads, I gotta mess with this for a second. Okay. Um, so let's get back to it. So in the laptop, what do I prefer that the Mac has? Uh, good question. It's, see, I'm gonna sound like a scrub because I'm not going to give like very great reasons. So I'm going to sound like I don't really know what I'm talking about, but it's, it's a smoother experience. It just works better. It's faster because Mac OS is optimized for this. What I do is that, is that I do a lot of computational work in, um, you know, cause I, I'm doing astrophysics. So it's a lot of like, and i also do a lot of like software engineering and software development. And it's critical that things run like well, like, like, like that, that I have a lot of performance and I get the most performance when running Mac OS, like my, my code compiles faster and that's really nice. Um, also, as you can hear from every Apple shill in the world, but they're not lying is the ecosystem. The ecosystem is like the ecosystem may actually be the primary reason to stick with mac os is the fact that like if i get a text message it comes up on my laptop and if i get a call it comes up on my laptop and it's the fact that all of my apple devices i i only need one at a time and what i mean by that is like is like if i am working on my laptop right I can have my phone. I, I don't need to know where my phone is. You know, my phone can be in another room. It could be in my pocket or, you know, it can be charging. It doesn't matter because all the apps that are on my phone are on my laptop, you know? And if I'm, and if I want to make a call, right, right, I need to make a call, you know, and I'm working on my laptop. Well, it's fine. I can just open the phone app and then make a call. You know, I don't need to have my phone. Or if I'm on the iPad, then I don't need to, um, then, you know, then if I get a call, it'll come up on the iPad. And if I need to make a call and all the apps that are on my phone, on my MacBook and all the apps that are on my MacBook or on my iPad and all the phones that are on, all the apps that are on my phone are, so it's, it's in, in on my watch too. So everything, and even like the clipboard is like, you know, it's like if I, so if I'm here, right. And let's say I'm like, I don't know if you can see this at all. I can't look at the camera, but, um, so if I'm here and I type some, right. And I'm typing some text here. I don't know if you can see this. I'm typing some text and then I forget how to select text. Cause they, 
I normally do, but they added a better way so I can text out here. I copy the text like this, right? Uh, what are you guys? Yeah, you're looking at the terminal. I go here and I press paste, right? It'll just, it'll paste it. So it's the whole, in every single level, the things are entered. And my MacBook, it has a, it has a fingerprint reader, which is cool, right? But if I'm wearing my watch, I don't need my, um, uh, I don't need to type in my password because as long as my watch is right next to it, it'll just NFC sign me in. So I don't have to worry about that. Oh, by the way, all the apps that are on my phone and all this stuff are also on my watch, right? So I can be on like a run or something like that. I don't need my phone with me because if I get a call, it'll come in on my watch or like I can do, I can send texts or like if I, like web browsing is awful on here because it's a watch, but if I wanted to, I could do that. If I actually go, another pro streamer move coming out. So if I'm here and like, let's say I was looking at something a few days ago, like on my history, the history is all synced across all of my devices. And if I go to like a new tab or something like this and I, so here are all my tabs and here you can see my tabs on my other devices. I have way too many tabs open. But it's like, I mean, I can just go on forever. I mean, like everything that's on my desktop, like, can you see my desktop right now? I don't know if you can see, but there's my desktop, all the files right there. If I go in here and if I go to the Finder app, which is like the File Explorer app on the Mac, or the File Explorer app on like Windows or Manjaro or whatever, right? I can go and then look at this. Where's the, oh, the, the video is blocking it. Here's the same desktop. So I can make a file here on the desktop, right? You know, new folder. And then that new folder just comes up like magic right there on the iPad. So, oh wait, where'd it go? Yeah, see, right here, new folder. So it just, so it's like, and this is why I tell people like, if you get an iPhone, or if you get an iPhone and then you and then you get a Mac or you get an iPad, you get trapped in because the convenience is so great. Like the way that I describe the Apple products is that like is that the the lines between different devices is blurred. You know? So like when I'm texting, you know, I don't think of texting as being on the phone. You know, texting doesn't doesn't matter on my device, you know, or my contacts. Like nothing depends on my device. You know, like my Twitch app here, it's like, it's all being synced. So it's, it's one. So when you have Apple products, it's not like, what is the experience of using the iPad or what is the experience of using the Mac? It is a singular experience that carries across all of your devices. Um, so that's what I like about the Mac and in terms of that kind of stuff. But then also in terms of like development stuff, it's, um, it's powerful. I don't think it's not as good for development as Linux is like a Linux based OS, but yeah, sorry, I'm rambling. All right. Pro stream remove, uh, back over here. Okay. Um, okay. Back to coding. So what, did, what was the last thing I did here? I made it. Okay. So now I compiled the files, but I don't know if they compiled correctly. So what I can do is that I can do this thing called check. And what this will do is that it will check to make sure that everything installed correctly. And it'll do that by, or by make sure everything compiled correctly. Cause what it'll do is that it'll run. So what I just installed was like tar. So what it's going to do is that I have a bunch of test files here, right? A bunch of tests like compressed files and they're all compressed in different ways. So this will run hundreds of tests to make sure it can compile all different or that to make sure that it can decompress all different types of files correctly. And then it'll do tests like compressing files and, and then decompressing it and make sure that things are the same. So it's a, so make check, right? Is something very powerful that I did and it will, um, um, it, yeah. So here you can see all of the, all the things that it's running. So if this, 
So if everything passes and I don't get any fails here, I can be a hundred percent sure this will work in anything. Cause this is really like this, this make check will try all different sorts of like edge cases and like try to trick it and things like that. So I, I'll, I'll know that if this works, that I was able to successfully compile it. So after this, then I can actually do install, make install. And what make install will do is that it'll move everything to its destination. But yeah, in terms of like, so that's the thing is that in terms of like desktop specific operating systems, like an operating system for a laptop or a desktop, I think like Manjaro or Arch is better than Mac OS, right? It, it, it is, it's just better, like in almost every way. You know, if you could have Arch on, you know, on this physical MacBook Pro, if I could put Arch on here, like Arch is a better desktop operating system than Mac OS. But if you're thinking about more than just the desktop, right? If you're thinking about the whole environment of all of your devices in your life, I think specifically for that, you know, then you have to make that call because then Mac OS can do a lot of really awesome things. But if I didn't have any, if I did not have a smartphone, I didn't have a tablet, I didn't have a watch, I just had a laptop. If the laptop was the only electronic device in my life, then without a doubt, those other operating systems would be better than Mac OS. Like without a doubt, but when you start introducing new things and spe and specifically different Apple things into that, then it gets a bit, uh, I don't know. So if you're thinking about getting, I don't know if you have an iPhone, but if you're thinking about getting an iPhone or an Apple watch or something, just think twice. Cause it'll suck you in once you have an iPhone, then, you know, and then if you get an iPhone and an iPad, then you just, you get trapped. Cause now I can see, I should have. I should have been doing the talking while things were compiling and checking instead of like doing all the talking and then running the test. And now I can't do anything and then, you know, have nothing to say. Oh, it is. It's totally overpriced without a doubt. This laptop with my student discount was like $3,500. I mean, it's like a good laptop. I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like, there's, this is a great laptop. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's like, so like, I don't know if it's a perfect laptop, but like, let's just say it is a perfect laptop. Like a perfect laptop shouldn't cost this much, you know? Like, even though there's nothing wrong with it, it's still way too much. Like I, like a perfect laptop shouldn't be this expensive. And like the phone, like the iPhone's like a thousand dollars. Well, Actually, all the smartphones are about a thousand dollars now. But Apple was like the first one to like start that trend of like their phones being a thousand freaking dollars, which is crazy. Yeah, gaming gaming isn't great on. Um, it's it's specifically the operating system that it's not good with. Like, if you install a different operating system it can be a lot better for a game. Like in terms of like the hardware, actually Mac OS is pretty good. Like on this one, I have 32 gigs of Ram. Um, I have an i9 9900K that's like, so it's overclockable. Um, and so it's like, it's very, it's a very, fa like it can go up to four point. The base clock I think is like 3.8 and then I can boost up to 4.9 gigahertz. So it's like, and by the way, uh, six cores, 12 threads. So it's like the hardware itself in my MacBook is actually incredible, like very fast. As I said before, like I need a super fast computer, like the, the physics simulations that I do, but it's like literally just gaming. Like there's just no support for it. Like there's no direct X or Vulcan or anything like that. But what I do do for gaming is that I can then, is that I can dual boot and I can boot into like Manjaro or like steam OS or something and then use Vulkan on there and have really great gaming performance. I also have a Windows partition that's also really good for gaming. So I have, so it's like right now, like in Mac OS games blow, but if I switch to an operating system that has like direct X, since there's no direct X for Mac OS, but if I switch to an OS that does have direct X, then it's like games actually run pretty good. Like, it's not like a gaming. I mean, there's no like, Oh yeah. By the way, it's, um, there's also a, um, 
there's the um, Radeon 580X in here, or 630X, or, so, or something like, it's a good GPU, but, um, you know, but it's not like there's an RTX 2080 in here, but when I switch to, let's say, Windows, I can play, like, um, like, I can play almost every game that I want to at, like, medium to high graphics and 1080p 60 FPS, like, I've been playing a lot of GTA. Well, actually, not since the semester, but over the summer, I played a lot of GTA 5. And I was playing GTA 5 at 1080p, like 90 to 100 FPS, and then high settings on everything. So not like extreme settings, but everything was on high. And then some some settings I said to like extreme. Like I think like the draw distance or whatever, like I set that to the maximum. And like some things I set to the maximum, and then everything else was like on high. And my MacBook could do that fine. But if I tried doing, but if I tried playing GTA 5, like, on macOS, it would be terrible. Because there's no, like, it would, like, it wouldn't have any optimizations or, like, OS optimizations, and it would, it would blow. But if I was doing it through Vulkan or something, I'd get pretty good performance. So what are you guys uh what are you guys doing right now? Like I hope you're not giving me all of your attention because I don't know if I deserve that. We're just sitting here waiting for things to compile. So are you like playing a game right now or or working or something or I mean I, I'd be flattered if I was having all your attention. Then I'd feel more um you know I'd feel a big responsibility to be entertaining. How do I what does the stream look like right now? I just noticed that I didn't have any lights on. Which is interesting, because looking at the camera right now, it looks like there is sort of lighting, but there is no lighting. I mean, the camera, I mean, laptop cameras are all pretty bad. But actually, when I was looking for laptops, I did look at a couple, like, PC laptop, And the cameras on there, it's like, obviously this camera sucks too, because it's like a laptop camera. But the camera on here is actually better than other things. Like, the fact that it's, like, dark in my room right now, and you can see me, it's so good. But let me turn on the lights. And then you can probably see me a bit better. Hey, Google, turn on the lights. Um, I'm also chatting with a friend that wants to start a YouTube channel. I also worked on my game earlier today. Oh, so are you, um, are you like a developer? Like, what do you, what do you do? I don't think I asked that. Yeah, you asked how old I am, but I never asked how old you are. What do you do? So yeah, I'm, I'm in university right now. I'm 21. What, uh, what do you do with your life? And what, look at all these tests that it's, right? as you can see here, it's like doing all of these very obscure and like edge case tests here. I'm doing a master's in graphics programming. I want to be a game dev. Cool, cool. Oh, Nice. I have a question. Um, I haven't been like, when I was looking at all the people streaming in science and technology, every single one of them had in their title like Luda Dev or something, Luda whatever. And I have no idea what that is. Do you know what that means? They were all making like a game or something. I don't know what it, I didn't have time to like stop in any of the channels. Ludum Dare, what's that? So truncate, grow. Okay, X adders. It's a game making challenge. Oh, that's cool. Are, is that what you're doing? Or no, you said you're making a portfolio game. Oh, oh, it's like a competition. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. All right, did everything pass? Yes, all right, everything worked, so that's good. So, yeah, Christian, let me know if there's, like, anything that you want to know. 
Like I can like about any of this. Um, do you are you making this? Are you making the game in uh, Manjaro right now? Okay, that's a really great question. So, that's a good question. I'm trying to, so what I'm working on right now, um, because that's actually different, two slightly different questions. They ask like, what are we installing? And then the stage we're in. Now, when I started this, I had, I started off with like a blank SD card, right? Nothing on it, completely blank. And then I got to this stage here, like where, you know, where we are now. Now, how did I do that? So the, so it's a bunch of steps, right? It, it takes like many hours. The first thing that you do is like on the machine, cause, cause you need to, you start this on another machine, right? Cause obviously you need to plug the SD card into something. So, the first thing that you got to do is that, or the first like 200 things that you do is like setting up the environment on like on, on an existing Linux machine to make sure everything's like working or, or to, to just set up the environment to make sure that things will work the way you want it to when you start interacting with the blank SD card. And then after you do that, um, one of the first things you do is like, you have to make an assembler. And the the assembler is what will be used to like take the um, take machine code that you give it, right? Like the assembly code and convert that into literal ones and zeros. Um, and the thing is, though, is that this assembler. So, so you make a few things at the beginning. You make like an assembler, and you make like a, a basic like static linker and things like that. Um, but the thing is like this assembler is like, it's a really bad assembler. It like can't do much. It's like very limited. It doesn't have that many features, right? But what you do is that you get this assembler, right? And you start making some like really basic shitty things, right? Some like very terrible libraries and things like that. I, would, um, I don't know if you know that much about C, but um, after, after you do that, um, that's a, it takes hours and hours and hours, and eventually you get to making your um, own compiler, right? Because this doesn't have, obviously there's no GCC on this blank SD card, right? So you actually go and you make your own C compiler, uh, GCC. And the thing is though, is that this GCC, right? Is like, it's, it's a very bad GCC. It's not like the GCC see that you think of like it only has c like no c plus plus most even what you think of as c this can't even do like the c standard library like you don't even include that so it's like you may ask like what is c without the c standard library and the answer is not much um but you have but at least you have a compiler now that you have a compiler you can start making tons of stuff way faster than before so one of the first things, actually the first thing that you do, once you have your shitty GCC, your shitty C compiler, is that you, is that you write and compile and configure a better assembler, right? So you go back and you redo what you did at the beginning because what you made in the at, way at the beginning was made with like something really bad, right? So now you remake that with something that's good. So you use GCC this bad GCC and think of this bad GCC as just a blunt instrument. That's not refined at all. Right. But you use this, but what you do with the GCC is that you use this compiler to make a bunch of other tools. Right. So you use it, actually you use it to remake all the tools that you've made before this point and to make tools that you weren't even capable of making before you had a compiler. 
And some of the things that you make is that you make a better assembler. Some li like you, you compile the C standard library, which you can do with, you know, without the C standard library, you can compile the C standard library. And once you have all of these different tools now that you've made with your awful C compiler, you can now go and rebuild GCC again, right? So, so like, this is like a second pass of GCC that you can now make with, and like, also like before this point, like everything's statically linked and all this stuff, like the C compiler can't do any dynamic linking and the compiler itself is statically linked, but now you can but now you can make a better C compiler, right? So now you remake G GCC, you know, you can like overwrite the last one, right? With this new C compiler. And the reason that you're able to make a better C compiler is because the first time you made GCC, right? You didn't have any C standard library. You didn't, you had an assembler that could only do very basic things. So this new C compiler that you make the second time, right? The second pass of GCC, is made with all the things that weren't available to you the first time you made GCC because they didn't exist yet. So you use the bad GCC to make the tools that will let you that will let you make the tools in the files that will let you build a better GCC later on. So now you have a better GCC that can do a lot more. It has a C standard library, no C++ or anything like that yet. And still, mostly everything is statically linked, but there is, but now this, your second GCC, right? It was made with a GCC that was, that could only do static linking. So this new GCC, like GCC pass two, itself is statically linked, but now you can do some basic dynamic linking with it. And now that you have this much better GCC, what's the first thing that you do with this better GCC that you have? Well, you go back and you remake all the stuff that you did before, right? But better. So that C standard library that I mentioned before that, that you built with that first awful compiler, right? Is that this was a very limited version of the C standard library. It wasn't the whole library, right? You had to exclude most of it. And also, so now you can make a better C standard library and you can make a better assembler too. So the first thing that you actually do with your new GCC, the second pass of GCC is that you make a much better assembler that you had before because now you have better tools to make it with. And as you can see here, this, there's sort of this pattern here, right? Where in making an operating system from scratch is that you start with something really bad, right? And you use this thing that's really bad, this blunt instrument to make instruments to, to make, so you use this blunt instrument to make new tools, right? That you can then use to, to remake previous tools as well as enable things that you can't do before. So with the second pass of GCC, the first thing that you do is remake everything that you did before. But now with the second pass of GCC, you can also re you can make tons and tons of programs that you, that were just impossible to do with the first version. So now with the second pass of GCC, you can do, again, you can remake everything but from before, but better, and then make things that weren't possible. And that's sort of the pattern, right? And you guessed it, you make tons of different things that you weren't capable of doing before, make everything better. And then after that, you make GCC again for the third time. And this time, GCC is almost entirely dynamically linked itself. It's capable of doing advanced dynamic linking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the stage that I'm in right now, and again, you start with a blank SD card, right? And you do all this stuff. Eventually you get to building bash, right? Bash is a huge step, right? You put bash on there and then you're finally able to, uh, root onto the system, right? So now I'm actually running on my, on my custom op, you know, so like what you see here, this is on my custom operating system. Um, so with this custom operating and then, and bash is actually a huge first step because once you're able now to actually load into your custom operating system, you can start configuring like file system structures and things like that, that weren't possible before. Right. And, you, um, and then once you have a better version of GCC and all that, what I, so I've had bash on here and been able to load in here for a couple days now, but what I did just yesterday was that after I was able to make so many great new tools with 
the third pass of GCC and bash and all these different things is that I recompiled bash. So I recompiled bash with all the new things I was able to make with bash. And now this is running a lot better now. Um, so the stage that I'm in right now, you ask what stage am I in? The stage that I am in is that we are leading up. And this actually leads into the other question you're asking, because you're saying, are you making your own distro with, oh, no, this is another person. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I thought this was you, Koshi. Okay. So, hey there, Cake Canass. Yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. Um, oh, wait, it seems like he left. Okay, never mind. But what you were saying, Cushy, is that um, is that I am the stage that I am in is that with my third pass of GCC, I'm remaking a bunch of stuff that I did before, and I'm getting ready to build the Linux kernel because we're not actually running a custom kernel yet, and all of these tools that I've been installing for the last few hours are things that I will need for to make the kernel and also just things to make the experience better like you can't have an like running linux with like without tar without being able to like decompress.zip files is not a great experience all right but anyways this is finished now so now we have installed tar which again tar is lets you create extract files from and list the contents of archives all right. So it, it's a long process. I've spent over 50 hours on this so far. It's like, it's really hard, but I've learned so much about Linux. It's like, this is a great project. Um, so let's see, tar. Or actually, so. Okay. So I'm probably going to install Okay, so yeah, let me install this text info here. So what text info is is that it's a package um, that contains programs for reading, writing and converting info pages. So when you think of text info, right? It has programs for reading, writing and converting like info page like sort of like man pages I think. Um anyways, so let's go in here. What sorts of options do we have here? to configure this with. So here are all the different flags I can use while making this. So uh, some of these, okay. And it's cool because this is all up to me, you know, how do I want to make this operating system? So, um, okay, so I think what I'll make this with is that I'll, Configure this with a few options like um, prefix slash user and disable static. So what the disable static does is that in this case, the top level configure script will complain that it's an unrecognized option. I don't know if you saw that, but the configure script for XS paragraph, which is which is another thing included in this package, will recognize it and use it to disable. Uh, installing a static uh, paragraph, um, a, a static XS paragraph dot a program to the user lib text info directory. Are you going to release it in the wild? I mean, why not? That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, just as like, as a PS, I mean, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if I'll be taking on Apple or Microsoft with this or even canonical definitely not any anybody like that so i'll finish making this and i don't know what editor you use when you're writing code but um but i like vim so actually right after i install text info i'll have everything i need to make vim which is a big deal because i like vim a lot and not having vim on here has been a big um there's been a lot of trouble. So let's see how long this takes. Time. Okay, so now I'm compiling it. But actually, after I'm done installing text info, I'm probably going to hop off because what I am simultaneously watching on the iPad is the Big House 9 
uh, Super Smash Brothers tournament, and Top Eight just started, and I'm probably gonna want to watch that actually. Uh, will it have a desktop environment? So that, believe it or not, you can do so much with Linux without a, like, I mean, everything that you're seeing that I'm doing on here doesn't have a desktop environment. And Linux is very, very powerful without needing any sort of graphical tools. Uh, but obviously it's sort of required to have graphical tools. So yes, I will have a desktop environment on here, but it's actually, that's very far down the line. Um, so it would be a long time before I install a desktop environment, which I will do though. Okay, now let's let's see if um. So now I'm gonna do the checking again. So again, what this will do is that, as you can see here, it's running all these tests, and it's running like you know these aren't easy tests here. You know, it's running very difficult. You know, it's doing stress testing. It's um it's testing for edge cases. It's running tests that span the whole range of things that the text info software can do. Um, so that I will know that if all of these pass, I know it was compiled correctly. Now you'll see things that say skip. Skip does not mean fail. If you saw before when I configured it, is that when I configured it, there was a bunch of options that were there, right? And I didn't select all of them. So there are tests. So if I installed it with certain features, right? Then there would be, you know, these difficult tests run on it to make sure that those optional features work the way they're supposed to, but I didn't. But for those optional features that I didn't pick, it's not gonna run those tests. So that's what skip means. So, so skip is fine. But then I did, but I also did specify a bunch of optional features. So that's what a lot of these tests are, is testing for the core functionality. I don't know where I should be pointing, but for the core functionality, um, and as well as the optional features. So let me actually go through this and make sure. See, it? pass, pass, pass. Uh, yeah, so this is looking, looking pretty good. Okay, so now that, Oh, hey, Wodo Weasel. How's it going, man? By the way, I hate to... This is like my second day ever streaming, and I hate to already be a shill. But if you guys want to, like, follow the channel, that would mean, like, a lot to me. And if you guys have any, like... If you have any thoughts about how the channel... Like, if you think I'm too boring, or if you think I need to be better at multitasking, which I know I do need to be talking to the chat and doing this stuff and better explaining it, let me know. Because I'm really trying to make this a great... You already followed? What the heck? Because I I installed something earlier that was supposed to make it so that um uh I that would like make it so that when somebody followed it would pop up, but that didn't happen. So that's disappointing. Why is that? I mean I'm not saying what the heck that you followed. I'm really glad that you followed. Thank you. But um, here, let's do some, look at this pro streamer transition right here. Look at that pro streamer, pro streamer transition. Okay, um, so I think if I go here, I can like see what's going on, see test. Yeah, it's not, it's not working. That's, well, that's not good. Maybe it needs to be in the, oh wait, maybe it's, like what if I do it now? Test, oh, uh, okay, I think it's working now. Oh, it did show up, okay, cool. So thanks, uh, what else? That means, um, so then, oh, I guess it didn't, didn't show on here for some reason. I don't know why that is. Oh, because obviously it's not going to show up like on my screen. Like it would show up like in OBS. Like if I'm looking here, that explains it. Okay. Well, I apologize for not thanking you guys when you followed. Uh, that, that means a lot to me. So what else? do you have any uh, programming experience or anything? Like, have you ever used Linux before? All right, now check this out. 
again, uh, this is my second day streaming, and I was so proud when I was able to get the get these transitions in here. The first time I did that, I was literally like, okay, I'm ninja. I felt like those transitions are just the most satisfying thing in the world, even though it's really easy. Um, okay. So what was the last command I ran? Okay. So all of this stuff. So now I can go ahead and actually install this stuff. Um, let's see. Now I'm also going, have you guys ever used like LaTeX or anything like that? Um, well, if you have, then what I'm actually installing now is a package that will, um, that will add support for that. So I'm going to text. Uh, okay. So what that thing that I just did there, the textmf equals user share textmf, that's a make file variable that holds the location of the root of the text tree. If for example, a text package will be installed later. And what this text info thing that I just installed, the info documentation system uses a plain text file to hold its list of menu entries. And this is located at user share info dir. But unfortunately, due to occasional problems in the make files of various packages, it can sometimes get out of sync with the info pages installed on the system. So if the user share info dir file ever needs to be recreated, the following optional parameters will accomplish the task. So if I ever need to redo it, right? All I can do, all I need to do is I can just do um, push the user share info, right? And um, then I can do rmv, um, so that I can do rmv dir, and then um, for f, and then for everything in here, right? I can just do um, so. If, oh, I said that's right. For for f in so do uh, install info f there to done this might take a second and then i can just do a pop d okay now i'm back uh yes i do have experience i've done a lot of c hardware based stuff and now doing python things and linux not a pro but worked with debian a while and with my raspberry pi I'm actually doing this on a Raspberry Pi, so very cool. Text is the LaTeX writer stuff. Yes, that's what it is. So I'm not actually installing LaTeX, but I'm but I am installing support to install LaTeX later, or LaTeX, however you pronounce it. I think it's like LaTeX. Everybody pronounces it different ways. So this package that I just that I wait, yeah, yeah. So this package that I just compiled here. It contains a couple of uh, programs. So one of them is info. And what the info program is, is that this is used to um, read info pages, which are kind of similar to man pages, but often go much deeper than just explaining all the available command line options. So like, for example, if I do man bison, which I was telling um, uh, Cushy before, who also, he just, where he started using Linux a while ago, but he's trying to learn more about it, get more into it. So... I told him about the man command. So if you do like man bison, it tells you, you know, information about it and how to use it in some high level overview stuff. Uh, well, actually it does, it can go a bit in depth, but compare that to something like the, so I'm sure a lot of people know about the man command, but then there's also the info command, which will go more in depth. So as you can see um, here, right? This is operator precedence, all this stuff. Uh, this is actually all licensed up. Okay, so this is the info bison here. So as you can see, it goes way more in depth than the man page does. Use text for university a couple times. Um, I have the Pi 4. So actually, if I go over here to my Raspberry Pi that's running right now, and if I run HTOP, 
Um, so you can see here, four gigs of RAM, which is pretty cool. And then four cores. And then actually, if, um, so you can see here, 1800 megahertz. Uh, so like 1.8 gigahertz uh, clock speed, which is really cool to have on a Raspberry Pi. Which Pi do you have? So yeah, it's, it's the Pi 4B um, with four gigs of RAM. What kind of firmware issues are you talking about? The only problem I've heard about it is the, um, the USB-C thing, which is kind of annoying and they should have like, they should have uh, figured out that problem before they launched it, but it hasn't really been a problem for me. Hey, you know, speaking of the Streamlabs that I was showing you before, something um, every time I open it, I don't know if they take a cut of like the money or thing, but every time I open it, they keep on asking me to put a PayPal link on the page. And they keep pushing that on me. And it's like, I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm going to wait until, like, my stream is, like, half a watchable before I feel like that would even make sense. Uh, okay, fire or it's a goddamn, oh, I already read that. Um, yeah. Anyways. Uh, back here. So that's the info command that I just installed. But I also... Um, compiled and made a few more commands just now. So one of them is the install info command, which is used to install info pages. So like that bison command, like I can install new pages like that by using the info install. There's also make info, which translates the given text info source documents into info pages, plain text, HTML, or LaTeX. Um, there's also PDF text, I to DVI, which is used to, so that means you can take a given um, text info document and and turn that into a PDF file. And just a couple of other things, like pod to text and stuff like that. Does it go to the official Git page and so on XD hundreds of reports. There's one hot fix patch that the core does. Oh, so the firmware issue is that, are there multiple firmware issues? But you're saying one of the firmware issues is that it gets hot. I noticed that too when I first got it, but it's fine now. Like, as you can see here, I'm actually overclocking it. I mean, like, um, the base clock is, I think, like, 1.6 gigahertz or 1.5 gigahertz. And I'm overclocking it to, to 1.8 gigahertz. And as you can see, my temperatures are crystal cool. Although, I put a heat sink and a fan. There, there is a fan, so I don't know if that's cheating. But as you can see here, it's, it's chilly in there. Yeah. Yeah, I do have a fan. I got the Canna kit, like, kit for it, and it comes with all that stuff. Like, it comes with a fan, which is pretty cool. Alright. So, um, actually, let's... Let me go back to see what you're And Linux, not a pro, but worked with Debian a while and with my Raspberry. Okay. So if people that do a lot of work in the terminal definitely know about the next thing that's on my list to install, and that's Vim, the volume proof text editor. It's a very, very powerful text editor, and I'm looking very forward to installing that in the next stream. Because as I was saying before, um, I'm actually... Um, uh, I'm a big Super Smash Brothers fan, and right now, just a few minutes ago, top eight of the Big House Eight uh, Smash tournament for Super Smash Brothers Melee just started, and I really want to watch that. So normally, I would work for a lot longer, but I'm gonna hop off now to um do that. Do you play Nintendo games in general? I'm not like obsessed with Nintendo, but like I've played like the Mario games, and I've played like um. I've played like four or five of the Zelda games. Um, and then I like Smash a lot. I mean, Smash is like, I really like, but, um, and I play like Star Fox and 
Like, I don't actually own a Switch, but, um, but I played like all the Mario games and stuff from like other consoles. And I've I played Odyssey. Odyssey is one of my favorite games of all time, and Breath of the Wild because my roommate before I moved out of my apartment, uh, my roommate had a Switch, and I played all of the games for Switch on there. So, yeah, there are some ITC problems too. If you're making us cross check some firmware issues, well, I don't have to worry about that. Well, actually, I probably do have to worry about that, but I'm going to be making my own kernel. So, oh, they're saying there's some firmware things. Uh, I don't know. Um, Smash is, yeah, I like, but the Switch is, makes you aggressive. Oh man, are you one of those people that like, cuss people out in Call of Duty or whatever? Well, thanks all you guys so much. I don't know if there's, is there anybody else here that might have joined recently? A lot of these people here are fake, like not real people, but like Sammy42, are you a real person? Oh, RPG, you're still here? How's it going, RPG? Yeah, I'll see. Um, Actually, what I'm going to be doing is that since the kernel is such like an important part, the first thing that I'm going to be doing, I can talk to you about a bit about my plan, is um, I'm going to be first before I make my own kernel, since as you've noticed, I'm actually doing all the user space stuff now. So once I'm done setting up all the user space stuff and I'm ready to actually make a kernel, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna make the Raspbian kernel that's you know used in the Raspbian OS and for the Raspberry Pi. That's the first kernel I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna install and then like try to boot into and see if that works. Since that one is like, you know, to sort of like minimize the places where errors could come in because I know that the Raspberry Pi kernel will work on, um, you know, on a Raspberry Pi. And that's sort of what I've been, and that's what I'm CH rooted with right now. So I'll install the Raspberry Pi kernel. And then once that installs, and then I can fix all of the errors in my user space stuff, right? That I know isn't caused by the kernel because I know the kernel's good. Actually, and again, I'm not going to use the Raspberry kernel. I'm not some kind of, you know, you think I'm some kind of person that uses a pre-compiled kernel, but I'll, I'll compile my, the Raspberry kernel is open source. So I'll take that, I'll make some changes to it to make it a bit more for me. And I'll, um, I'll use that kernel. But then once, but once I use the Raspbian kernel and that works, and then I've confirmed all my user space stuff, then I'll go and I'll actually make my own kernel. So your tip is actually very good for me because then I can see about using that and comparing the two kernels and seeing if I need to if I need to upstream some stuff from the Raspbian kernel. All right, again, um, so all the people that were in here today, so let's see, we got uh, RPG, uh, Cushy, and then Wodo Weasel. Uh, I don't know if there's any lurkers in here, but you three have been like really, really awesome guests. Um, what oh, you came in near the end, so hopefully you come back again and I can, uh, we can spend some more time talking because like this isn't just me compiling stuff. It's a lot of like me wanting to show people like not just how Linux works, but I want to show them that too, but also how to use it. So if you say that you, um, you know, that you haven't used Linux that much, hopefully I can teach you how to get like really good with it and different things you can do with it and how to optimize workflows and things. And I was talking a lot about just like different sorts of technology that I use in my life. And, you know, how I think about development and different tools. So, um, yeah, so hopefully I can do that a lot for all you guys uh, if you decide to come back again. And, yes, next time I will be, um, next stream I'll be compiling, making and installing Vim and configuring all that stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so, so much. And um, I'll see you guys. Oh, how do I raid? I've never actually done a raid before. Because I've always, you know, this is like my second time streaming. And I had a couple people in like like last time, but I only had like one person at a time. But now that I have three whole people in here, I'm going to do my first raid on a time to, I suppose. Okay. Raid. Like, do I do exclamation mark raid? No. Do I do, oh, oh, slash raid. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if I do slash raid, then host. Who should I host? Should I host 
the channel that I'm going to now. Oh no, no, I'm okay. It's not bad, but we just got somebody else in the chat. Oh, that's so cool. I feel like I'm super popular right now. So there's four people now in here that I can confirm aren't bots. So that, that's awesome. Hey, what's up? Um, Emil, Emilinger, what's the point of using Linux from scratch and not Gen 2? Um, the better question is what's the point of using Linux from scratch and not like literally anything else like Arch or, um, or Gen 2 or like Manjar or anything like that. Um, the main, so I, I was saying this earlier to RPG and he was just asking, you know, why are you doing this Linux from scratch project? Like why are you making your own operating system? And the reason from that is you know, and why not, you know, just use another Linux distribution or use Mac or something like that? Like, why do you have to make your own? The reason for that is because, you know, all those people that are like, oh, I use Arch, BT dubs and those people. So um, the reason that I'm doing this is so that that way, the next time somebody tells me that, you know, they use Arch, by the way, I can, you know, I can, I can feel better than them. So that's, that's really, that's actually the only reason that I'm doing this, you know? So, um, you know, so, or, you know, all those Gen 2 people like, oh yeah, I use Gen 2. So all you guys are plebs. And then I can, you know, be in the room and be like, well, actually, you know, I use Linux from scratch. Um, I, I'm kidding. Of course. Um, the reason that I'm doing, um, the reason that I'm doing this isn't just so I can be better than everybody else and have the biggest, uh, Linux, the biggest Linux stick in the room. It's actually so I can learn about it. You can also, well, um, use Debian BTW. That's like, dep depending on the, I, I, I like Debian. I mean, actually I'm making this on Debian right now. So that's what like, you know, that's what I'm, if I go back here, like this is technically on Debian right now. Um, but well, not the Linux, not, not my new environment. I mean, I, I meant to switch back to here. Uh, this is like, this stuff is all, is all Debian. Obviously my Linux from scratch thing, this is nothing. This is my own. Um, so you can, cre it depends how you define distro, I guess. Like, what do you mean? I mean, a, um, a distro is just like a distribution. So, I mean, you could technically have like just straight Ubuntu and then add like, you know, one more program to it and then distribute that thing. That's exactly Ubuntu plus one more program and be like, it's a new distro. Um, so you can create distros through Gentoo. I mean, or, or anything. The reason, the actual reason that I'm doing Linux from scratch is because um, I started using like bash and Linux a couple years ago, and I like really fell in love with it. I'm not actually a like a, a software engineer like as my main gig. I'm actually like an astrophysicist. But the thing that draws me to astrophysics is the um, the ability to um, uh, is is learning how things work at a very fundamental level and getting to explore that and experiment and make cool things. And that's and I have a similar feeling like that with computers. And that's why I love Linux so much. It's because you can really figure out how things work. And so what I want, so I've always, I wanted to do Linux from scratch. So then that way I could, um, so that way I could learn how Linux works at a fundamental level. And obviously if you do go through the process of installing Gen 2 or Arch, you're definitely going to learn a lot about how Linux works. You know, I mean, if you're using Ubuntu, you're going to learn how Linux works, but if you, but if it's, but if you use Arch instead, you're going to learn a lot more because you're going to have to know more about how Linux works in order to use it, you know, or Gentoo. You're going to have to know a lot about Gentoo or you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn a lot about Linux in order to install and use Gentoo the way you want to. But Linux from scratch, that's the ultimate level of that. So I think the gain that you can get from using Gentoo or Arch, you can get from using uh, Linux. I mean, you definitely can and you will, but also like more. Yeah, so I, I have I have a couple like um, a couple Arch VMs. Shell commands are basics, definitely basics. I mean, I'm again I. Somebody asked earlier, 
or I think it was Cushy. He's like, oh man, dude, you're so good at Linux. I literally have no idea how to respond to that because I personally think I am so bad because like sometimes I'm thinking like, oh man, I'm doing all this cool stuff. I'm writing these cool like shell scripts or whatever. And I'm figuring all this stuff out about Linux and I'm doing Linux and I think like I'm good. And then I'll like meet somebody and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like there's so many, there's levels, you know, in terms of like Linux and bash knowledge. So I definitely run into people a lot that I'm like, that make me realize I have no idea what I'm doing. I searched back to Debian because I wanted to get work done. LOL. True. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, shell commands are, so I, I don't know how, I think, I, I really don't know like how much I know about Linux, but I've learned from doing this project, I've spent over 50 hours on it so far. I've learned so much about Linux, like from like the user space stuff. Like I've learned new commands, having to like make this environment that I haven't learned before, like user space stuff, but also just how things work, like kernel stuff and all that and how all these system calls and dynamic linking and all that. Like I knew what dynamic and static linking were, like I could define them for you. And I had used them in a couple cases when I was like writing C or C++, but I didn't get how it worked. And I didn't, and I, and I didn't really get, and I knew some basic ways of using, but I didn't get how far you could get with those sorts of things and the full, you know, the full potential of it. And that's what I've learned about that. The learning curve of, are you talking about the learning curve of Linux or like, or Linux from scratch? Definitely the learning curve of Linux is steep, but the learning curve of Linux from scratch is like literally a, a, a vertical wall that goes up to the height of Mount Everest. Linux from scratch is like, is extremely difficult. So, I mean, it's been, it's been really tough, but I've learned a lot. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I think that um, like Debian, again, people, um, Cushy, I know you were telling me earlier about the, the superiority of like, um, and, I, and I'm sure Cushy would tell you, um, Emil, that uh, you should try something like, I literally forgot what it was called. The the Arch thing, the, the user-friendly, like Mojang? I, we were just talking about it a few minutes ago. I want to say Mojave, but that's the Mac operating system. Um, Manjaro, yeah, Manjaro. So I'm sure he would tell you that if you want to use something like Arch with the user-friendliness and productivity of Debian, you should look at Manjaro. But um, there there is some things about Debian where it is like, there's less to worry about, you know? And somebody like me, I like it when things don't work, you know? Like, I, I like it when, not, not when things don't work, but I like it when, th yeah, actually, yeah, sort of when things don't work and you have to go and fix it, you know? Like, when I had Arch on there, you know? On Debian, so many things just work. But on Arch, you'll try to do something that you think is basic and it doesn't work. And it's like, why is that? Oh, because all of the stuff that Debian has by default and does automatically, your computer doesn't do. So all the stuff that Debian does automatically or Ubuntu does automatically, on Arch, you have to go through and do that all yourself and set all that stuff up and figure out what's going on and then try to automate that yourself, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if you're the kind of person that likes it when things don't work and you have to go through and learn, and because in order to figure out why it's not working and how to do it yourself. You have to learn about how that works. So I love it when doing those sorts of things. But but if you're the kind of person that doesn't, you know, if you're, I, I can't imagine why somebody wouldn't like it when things don't work. But if you are the kind of person that doesn't like it when things don't work, then, you know, hopefully Cushy doesn't get too mad at me but I think there is a lot of use for Debian. Although Manjaro is like, Manjaro is sort of like the Ubuntu of Arch. I'm sure Kushi's like, he's reporting me right now. But in the sense that Manjaro is very user-friendly while giving you that same power that Arch has. Manjaro is like a great, um, Manjaro is a great operating system because it takes so much of what's great about Arch and things about other, op it's like, Manjaro is like Arch, but like good. 
you know, not not Arch, but good, but Arch, but friendly, a happy face on Arch. You know, Arch, Arch, you have to build the happy face yourself. Manjaro comes with that. Um, but but honestly, even then, even though it is a happy face on Arch, there are if you're not the kind of in a lot of ways, Debian is still is still better, even if, like, let's just say Manjaro actually is a better operating system in terms of its user-friendliness and, like, portability and all that stuff than Ubuntu, right? Even if Manjaro is just objectively better, it still doesn't change the fact that in terms of portability, I mean, I'm sorry, in terms of compatibility, more people, there's hardly any support, like, from big companies, there's hardly any support for Linux already. And where there is support for Linux or GNU slash Linux, it's gonna, it's gonna be like Debian stuff. You know, you're gonna have dot deb. You know, the websites are gonna be like, you know, they probably won't come with a GUI installer. So, but probably the only instructions they'll say is do you know sudo apt install, right? So that's a Debian thing. So where there is a little support for Linux, which is pretty rare, even then that support is is thinking of Debian and Ubuntu first. So. Yeah. And again, then that all just begs the question. I'm, t I'm saying all this stuff, yet I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm making my, home, my own operating system, you know, because there are some people out there that support Arch and Gen 2 or whatever, but there is nobody out there that supports Vajirot OS, which is what I'm making, you know, so that by definition is going to have the worst support out of anything in the world. But again, I'm, so I sound like a huge hypocrite, but I'm doing this so I can, um, um, so I can have the opportunity to learn a lot. You don't need corp support when you have the AUR. True. Um, yeah, the Arch, that's like, like the AUR and Arch Wiki and like the OS Wiki or whatever, those are such great resources. Um, all right. So, as I was saying before, um, I am a big Super Smash Brothers fan, and actually, I am watching this uh, the top eight of this tournament that just started, and I kind of want to watch it. So I'm actually going to get off now. But to shill for one more second, um, even though this is my second day ever streaming, if somebody, if you guys would want to um, follow, that would mean like. A lot to me you know because i just started like doing this and definitely like i'm gonna get better like something that i'm really bad at right now is like multitasking like i could have been most of the time not most of the time but a lot of the time i'm doing this linux refactoring is just waiting for things to compile so i have this terrible habit where i start um where it's like i will talk a whole bunch without doing anything on here and then as soon as i'm done talking i'll start compiling things and that takes like you know 20 minutes and now i have nothing to say even though I should have been doing the talking while things were compiling. So thanks so much, guys, for coming by. Which time zone are you in? I'm on the U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, you said a couple minutes ago which time zone you were in. But, um, yeah, so it's, like, it's 5.48 p.m. where I am right now. Or in, like, normal people units, it's uh, 17.48 right here. All right, see you guys so much. And... If you guys want to come by again and it, like, so we can have very personal, you know, one-to-one -one sort of me talking about how all this stuff works, that'd be awesome. Thanks. Oh yeah. Wait, how do I raid? Hang on. I, we were trying to figure that out. Oh, oh, I think I figured it out. All right. If you guys want to watch some six Super Smash Brothers, uh, you should definitely come here. All right. Bye. Oh, one viewer is ready to raid. Wait, how does this work? Oh, two viewers. A few viewers. Okay, I think that's everybody. All right, peace. Raid now?